Hey there, it's Kenzie from Details to Enjoy, and today I'm going to be making the kits from our July and August vignette subscription box. Since both of these kits are going to be using the same color palette, I'm starting by separating all of the pieces into groups that are going to be painted the same color. I'm starting off with the group that's going to be painted white, so I have my paint tray and brush, and I'm going to be using the color Silky White by Bear. Using my foam brush, I'm going to paint a thin coat of white paint onto my insert. I always work in thin coats, that way it'll dry faster and smoother. I'm just going to paint this all over the insert and I'm not worrying about the engraved lines. Now to remove any of that paint that built up in the engraved lines, I'm just going to take a tack and scrape out all the excess paint, making sure to remove the paint that's on the tack with my finger before moving on to the next line. Then I will just repeat that process for every hexagon, and you can see as I work across the insert that this just brings back the detail of those engraved lines. This process is easiest if the paint is wet, but it's okay if it dries a little bit because it is going to dry fairly quickly. Once the paint is fully dry, I can go in with my second coat, and then again, I'm just gonna go through with the tack and clear out all of the lines. For my third and final coat of white, I'm just going to be focusing the paint on the center of the insert, avoiding the hexagons, because the hexagons are going to be painted with yellow later on. You could be working on your smaller insert at the same time as your larger insert, but I just went ahead and did that off camera. We want a slightly transparent look on the wings, so we're going to be doing the color wash method. And for this, I'm going to need my paint sponge and a little cup of water. We need to start off by rehydrating the sponge, so I'm just gonna dip that into the water until it's nice and soft. Then I'm going to get a little bit more of that silky white paint onto my tray, get a few drops of water using my sponge and swirl that into the paint until it's nice and liquidy. And then I'm going to apply that to the wings with my sponge. You wanna make sure that the texture of the MDF is showing through the paint. If it's not showing through enough, you may need to add more water. And if it's showing through too much, you may need to add a little bit more paint. Then I'm just using the clean, wet end of my sponge to remove any of the excess paint. Now I can just repeat those steps for the other wing. And just like I did with the honeycomb insert, I'm going to use the same tack to remove the excess paint from the engraved lines of the wings. Now that I'm done with all of my white pieces, I'm gonna go ahead and move on to all the pieces that are going to be painted black. So I have a new foam brush and my black paint. I'm just gonna get a little bit of this onto my tray. Just like I did on my inserts, I'm working in very thin, light coats, and I'm tapping off most of the excess paint from my brush, and then just lightly painting onto the pieces. The great thing about black paint is that you don't have to be too careful because the edges of your letters and words are already black. By the time I was finished with my first coat on everything, the paint was already dry and I could start working on my second coat. And finally, we need to paint our yellow B stripes. And so for this, I'm going to be using Amber Brew by Bear and one of our detail brushes. This is the larger of the detail brushes. Again, I'm just using thin light coats and going back for a second coat if needed. And I'm keeping the edges black on these pieces. Next, I'm going to be painting the yellow into my honeycomb insert. So for this, I'm using that same detail brush that I used before. I'm getting a little bit of water on the brush and adding that to some of the paint, but I'm making sure to leave some of the paint unmixed with water so that I can use a variety of watered down paint and pure paint to get different variations in color. So I'm filling in each hexagon, making sure to stay within the lines, and I'm using the larger detail brush to do the bulk of the shape in the center. And then I'm gonna go in with my smaller detail brush to go all the way to the edges, just to get a little bit more precision. Then I'm just gonna repeat that process on all the hexagons on my insert, and I'm making sure to use a different amount of water for each hexagon so I get a variation in how they look and get a watercolor look, and every hexagon is going to end up unique. Finally, I'm gonna go in with some more white paint and a clean detail brush. This is the smaller detail brush, and I'm just gonna clean up the edges of my hexagon. Anywhere that I got a little bit of yellow paint over the edge, I'm just gonna clean that up with some of this white paint. 
Now that everything is painted and dried, I'm gonna go in with my sanding sponges and give everything a quick sand. Sanding can do two things. It will smooth out the finish and you can add distressing. So to smooth out the finish, you're going to use the sanding block flat against the piece and just sand very lightly. And then if you wanna add some distressing, you'll go in at about a 45 degree angle against the edges of your piece and take off as much paint as you want. After I'm done sanding all of my words, I'm going to move on to my other pieces, making sure to switch sanding blocks between each color. Because the yellow paint was a little bit thicker and wetter, you wanna make sure that it's nice and dry before you sand. So for this, I'm going to start off by sanding the center portion of my insert where there is mostly white, and then I will go over the yellow portions once that's nice and smooth, trying to avoid any cross-contamination of the yellow and white if I can. Once that is all sanded, I'm going to flip over my insert and tap out any of the excess dust. And then I will use a clean dry rag to remove all of the sanding dust from all of my pieces. Now I can move on to assembling my kits. All of our kit pieces come with a peel and stick adhesive backing. So I just need to peel off the protective backing on my piece. And then I can center this onto my insert. The nice thing about this is that if you place it gently onto the insert, you can still move it. So I'm just gonna make sure that everything is looking centered and straight. So you can use your fingers to get it centered from side to side, or you can use a ruler. You also wanna make sure that it is straight and not crooked. And then once I'm happy with that placement, I'm going to give it a gentle press to make sure that it is stuck in place. Then I'm just going to repeat that process for the wings and for the stripes that go into the bead body. For the honeycomb insert, you wanna make sure that the larger gap is on the left and the smaller gap is on the right. And I'm also going to be using the hexagons as a guide on where to place my template. The top edge of my template is going to line up with the top edge of the third hexagon from the top and the left edge of the template is going to line up against the points on these hexagons on the left. Once everything is looking centered and straight, you can secure the template in place with some painter's tape. Then we're just going to repeat the same process as before and use the peel and stick adhesive backing to attach all of our words and just placing them into the center of the openings of the template. Then I can remove the template and reveal my finished insert. And there are our finished kits. I hope you guys enjoyed creating with me today. And if you make your own versions of these kits, we'd love to see them. So be sure to tag us on social media where details to enjoy on Instagram and Facebook.